everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. We hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas. It's so good to see so many smiling faces this morning. Good to have all of our guests with us today. Why don't we give all of our guests a warm welcome? So good to have each of you with us today. There is a card in the seat back pocket in front of you. We would love to connect with you. If you don't mind, fill that out and slip that into the offering plate here in a moment when our ushers come around to receive stewardship. And uh, we will connect with you and uh, hopefully get to know you just a little bit better. Today is the last Sunday of 2020. And I hear thank you, Jesus. Maybe a little bit of relief. But if 2020 has not been your year, that can all change today. You've got one more Sunday to get everything going the way that you need it to go. And I just wonder if we couldn't stand all over this place. Sister Doherty, our prayer director, gave an incredible illustration this morning about putting wood in a fireplace. And you put one piece of wood in that fireplace and it's only going to burn for so long. But you put two in there, or three in there, or four in there, and you're going to have yourself a good-sized fire that's going to warm the surrounding area that you're in. And her challenge to us in pre-service prayer was, why don't you join with somebody and let your fire burn together? Get that Holy Ghost fire burning one to another and see what God will do in this place. I wonder if at the outset of this service, if we could link up one with another and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Can we worship Him together? Before the first song is ever sang, God, we give you glory. We give you thanks today. God, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place. God, for the miracle that we're going to see uh, for the wonders that are going to take place uh, for those that are going to be filled with your spirit uh, God we give you glory uh, we give you honor today for you alone are worthy uh, hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah let's continue this in worship today uh, as our praise team leads us
somebody an air, air elbow or something nearby. Turn around and see somebody that you haven't already greeted. Say hi to them. That's so important. This is not filler in a service, but it is so important that we connect. Ushers are coming. You may be seated. The presence of the Lord while they're coming. I want to mention that on the 3rd of January, Echo will be hosting a bake sale for their ministry. Also, the 4th through the 8th. Be sure to mark your calendars. The 4th through the 8th, right after the bake sale, we're going on a fast. <laughs> right after the bake sale, everybody, we're putting everybody on a fast. It is all church consecration. We're inviting you, asking you to join with us that week, the 4th through the 8th, beginning next Monday, and consecrate ourselves together. Let's say that word together. Together. One more time. Together. Together. Let's do it together. What does that mean for me, uh, Brother Burns? What that means is make a consecration to the Lord. We're encouraging all who are able to fast with us. That's that's the deprivation of food. We're going to push our food back. And it's not to lose weight. It is to lose spiritual weights and things that are besetting us. Getting our mind on the Lord. Somebody say first fruits. We're going to give God the first week of our new year. On the 5th, this is important, important, important. I think the last one we had maybe around 40 folks that joined with us. I'd like to see at least 80. Let's double this number. But on the 5th of January, that's Tuesday night week, a week from this coming Tuesday night, we're going to meet here in the sanctuary for prayer at 6 o'clock. On the night, there is a men's breakfast, so we get to eat before the week starts and then after the week starts. We got this sandwiched in, don't we? Mom to Mom, it's a brand new ministry under our ladies ministries, is meeting on July, <coughs> January the 9th. You can tell I don't normally do announcements, don't you, can't you? But on the 9th of January, Mom to Mom, it is a ministry for single mothers. Be sure to mark your calendar for that. Christmas for Christ. Oh, I would have you say it out loud. But on the 24th of January, our Christmas for Christ offering will be given if you haven't already got that in by then, we encourage you to join with us. And then Revival Weekend on the 30th and 31st. It's going to be a little bit different that weekend. We're going to have a Saturday night service and a Sunday night service. So I'm encouraging you, urging you to mark your calendars so you don't forget it. But Saturday night at 6 o'clock, Sunday morning here at 1030, and then Sunday night at 6. Brother and Sister Corneo, We'll be ministering great evangelists. God is using them greatly. And we want to encourage everybody that uh, can to be here in the house of God with us. Let's lift our gifts to the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to sow into your work and kingdom. Thank you for the tithe, the offerings, every pledge and commitment. We know that you love a cheerful giver, so today we give cheerfully into the work of God. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Let's work, continue to worship the Lord and praise Him.
right now let's close our eyes and entertain the presence of the Lord block out everything around you block out all the clutter of last week and the week coming and just take a moment and magnify the Lord Jesus above everything you're facing hallelujah hallelujah king of glory fill this place hallelujah 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 I invite you to join with us and magnify the Lord wherever you are right now. Just magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> His presence is in this house. Hallelujah. Just want to be with you, Lord. Just come to be with you, Lord. And everyone said in Jesus' name, you can be seated in the presence of God. So delighted to have our friends and guests with us today. Some that I know we've already welcomed everyone to the house of the Lord, but new friends, we're so glad to see you in the house of God with us. Our prayer has been that your casual visit will become an unforgettable experience in the presence of Jesus Christ. Our God is so great and mighty. It's good to see Brother John Hillis home from working out. He'd come home for the holidays. Welcome, Brother John, home. Love you, Brother John. <clears throat> we haven't started praying that, that his out-of-state job would hurry up, but I'm about ready to. Sure am missing him and the work that God is doing in his life. I don't know if, I don't remember if we conveyed it to you but brother john had a fall off of a, a bridge uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 feet into a very shallow uh, stream of water and had only very minor scrapes and injuries and we think that's the lord protecting him god's got his hand on brother john's life amen good to see brother watson and his family in church and I want to bring to you a new friends to this church, and brother and sister Lowry are here today. This is Sister Marie Scout and Sister Pat Dillon's sister and her husband. They have been serving for many years in St. James, Missouri. In the season of life that they're in, they have transferred, come to Popper Bluff, and they've made it known they want this to be their home church. And so today we officially welcome them, Bishop Don and Sister Georgia Rapp, that Lowry, would you welcome the Lowry family? So glad they're here. Amen. Brother and Sister Lowry are precious folks. We got to visit a few moments uh, a few days ago, and 
and they're living off of Barren Road, uh, down a little ways by near Maine, and I want you to make them welcome. Go by and offer your friendship to them. Let them find a place quickly, and I know they'll be a blessing to your life as well. We're so thankful that they're here with us. Just all of you, good to see you in the house of the Lord. And our online congregation today, some that are not able to be here are joining us online. Some still have family in, and it's good to have those who are in for the holidays. I'm going to preach from the book of Genesis chapter 4. If you would join me in Genesis chapter 4, I'm going to read one verse, verse 26. In your hearing. Now, the word that's in my heart, um, sometimes it is needful and necessary to set up something that's going to be spoken, and that is the case today. I'm going to sound like a preacher probably out of the 40s, 1950s, because of the tone and tenor of how this message came to my heart I would say that it it kind of sneaked up on me I've never preached from this text and never preached from this title so I think it's Matthew chapter 5 there's about three or four times there in Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus uses this phrase you have heard in old times You have heard how it was said in old time. And what Jesus was using was he was calling his hearers back to another time, to another place, to some point in their past, that it was said in a different way. And so today that's kind of in my spirit. I may not sound like a modern evangelist or a modern pastor to you this morning. I don't know really how it's going to happen. But I'm going to preach, uh, by the grace of God, the way it has come to me. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 26. And the Bible says, And to Seth, to him also, there was born a son. And he called his name Enos. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord There at the birth of Enos, something transitioned. And I want to preach for a little while today on the thought, call upon the name. Would you join me and let's pray together over this word and up over our ears to hear our hearts to receive. Pray with me, would you? Lord Jesus, thank you for the privilege of preaching the word of the Lord today. Let my spirit and my soul and my body be used to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we praise you. I wonder if you would join with me and just thank the Lord for his word together right now. All across this room, maybe put your hands together, lift up your voice with me to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your word today. Thank you for the Word of God. The Word of God is amazing. The Word of God is, uh, the Bible itself is an amazing book written by about 40 penmen, only one author, but about 40 penmen over a course of maybe 1,500 years. And it is flawless in its doctrines and its teachings. I have never found an error And I don't really expect to, but I have studied it with the intention of finding an error early in life. And I've found the Bible to be an amazing book. No wonder we call it the Word of God. Because an amazing God authored this amazing book. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful to have a road map for life right here in my hands. The Word of God. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Praise God. 
I'd like to draw out a little more thanksgiving from your heart for the power of the Word of God in your life. Aren't you thankful today that you have a more sure word of prophecy, that the Word of God is living and abiding in you? In you. That's right, the living Word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16, and I build my case, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word of God is powerful. Listen to what Jesus declared about the word. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, Jesus said it this way, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, Shall, not, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus is saying that each lowercase i in the Bible, the little dot above that i, and the cross in every t shall be fulfilled before heaven and earth pass away. It would be as easier for that to happen than the word of God to be unfulfilled. Praise God. Aren't you thankful that the Word of God is not just a book, but it's a person? Hallelujah. His name is Jesus, for he has written upon his thigh and upon his vesture the Word of God. He's King of kings. He's Lord of lords. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Amen. And the Word of God. I'm grateful for the Word of God. I'm grateful for parents who early on in my life demanded and even commanded that the Word of God be put in my heart. Every detail, the smallest and most obscure, which I'm going to share one with you in just a moment, will come to pass because God's Word shall not ever be broken. Let me share such a detail with you. Now, this has been several months back for our church family. In fact, it's been, it was Father's Day 2018. Father's Day 2018. I shared with you a clip from a rabbi, Rabbi Daniel Lappin, who, who expanded on the word son, if you'll remember that. And I used, I didn't send this to media, but I used a... Uh, his clip and how that the word father, ab, in Hebrew, and the word son, when they unite those two words, create a new word called eben, and it is the word stone. I think you'll remember that. Stone. The word stone is a composite word in the Old Testament, and it means father's son. The uniting of father and son to become a stone. Now, I won't rehearse that for you today, but I will give you a little bit of of explanation as to why I bring this up. Look in Genesis 4.26. In Genesis 4.26, the Bible doesn't say that to Seth was born a man child or a male child, but Enos was born a son. Genesis chapter 5, I think it is, in the last verse, there's this distinction. Let me go over that with you. I don't think I gave it to you. But Genesis 5 and verse number 31, maybe? Yes, verse 31, 32. Genesis 5, 32. Let me show you how this works. And Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. No mention of their gender, no mention of their position in the family. But notice down now in chapter 6, if you're in your Bible, come down to chapter 6 and verse number, uh, it's Bible study. Find with me how that it is repeated that Noah had three sons in chapter 6, verse What is it? 10, chapter 6 and verse 10. Here we go. And Noah 
beget three sons. In the first verse, there's no mention, just the mention of their names. That's not superfluous. That's not just uh, a casual missing detail. What he's telling you is that over a 120-year period, Noah was preaching about the coming flood, and those boys became sons. They took on their father's purpose. That's what son means in the Old Testament is to take on the father's purpose. Now, all of you oneness people are going to the New Testament already, I can tell. But in our text in Genesis 4.26, Enos, Enos was born a son. He was born with a purpose upon his life. And this is an important, significant detail. It is the stone of building. The scripture will say somebody begat somebody else. You remember those in Chronicles this year. But when the scripture says that a son or daughter is born, the point is they will continue the purpose of the father. They're born with something in them of their father. And so Enos was such a person, born a son. Got the point? Moses, who is writing the book of Genesis, he connects the birth of Enos as a significant moment in the beginning in the human family. Now you've got to catch this point. Stay with me. I know it's a little different ride today. But something happened. When Enos was born, and it's revealed in the scripture, Genesis 4, 26, when Enos was born, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, that's sort of a microscopic view of detailed words. I'd like for you to put your microscope up for a minute. Pull your telescope back out. So now we're going to see an expansive view of what God is doing in the light of that detail. Now I sent the media center a graphic about the Hebrew and English. I'm going to explain this to you. If all of the Hebrew people understand that each name in the Old Testament conveys a divine meaning. And if you translate the word Adam or Adam into English, you get the word man. Here are the patriarchs. This is the list of patriarchs. Ten of them, in fact, coming up to the flood. The ten patriarchs out of Adam through Seth. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enos, his name means mortal or mortality. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means the death his death shall bring. Lamech means powerful and Noah means rest or comfort, the comforter. In fact, it's, all of these words are translated as you read your text. The reason why I ask you to get your telescope out is because this arrangement of births and sonship being passed on in generations. Listen to me now, church. A beautiful message emerged to the Hebrew people. And the next slide will tell you the message that they received from those translated words. Man is appointed mortal, mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the powerful rest and comfort. When they read those names aloud together by the 10th generation, they knew there is coming one. The great God himself shall come down. And when he dies, there's going to be released a rest and a comfort to all men who are under mortality and sorrow. Is there anybody in this house thankful that we just celebrated the birth of the great God who came down? <laughs> I 
wonder if there's anybody in this house that can know with me the great God has come. The great God came down. He came teaching and released rest. Somebody worship him for his word right now. I'm getting ready to preach. Somebody worship him right now for his word. Somebody worship him for his word. What a message in the names. A telescopic view in Genesis 5. Genesis chapter 5 that I read to you the last verse out of. Genesis 4, that I read to you the last last verse, describes the birth of Enos to Seth. Now, there is a bit of hesitation in my uh, mind because I don't know solidly, but I know enough to go ahead and say it. It is a study in progress. Up until Genesis chapter 5, The only person to die and be recorded in Scripture is Abel. Cain slew his brother Abel. There's no deaths recorded, just births and lives. But at the birth of Enos, flip back to that chart if you would, his name, if you'll remember, means what? Mortal. These people were living hundreds and hundreds of years. The idea of mortality had only been understood in the context of murder. The only person recorded to have died is Abel, and that was because he was murdered. All of these people were living 800, 900 years. But in chapter 5, just after the birth of mortal, see, we think Enos, but in their minds, they're thinking mortal. What does that mean? Why was Seth prompted to hand that name to his son, Enos? He felt an impression. Something was coming. A manifestation of mortal and mortality. And here he is, naming his son Not immortal, but mortal. And in chapter 5, if you'll look at chapter 5 with me, verse number 3, chapter 5, verse 3 of the book of Genesis, and Adam lived 130 years and beget a son in his own likeness. After his image, he called him Seth. And the days of Adam, after he begat, begotten Seth was 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. Here we go. Verse 5. This is the verse. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and now here's the three words. And he died. For the first time in recorded scripture the human family was having a funeral. And the weight of mortality started to brush in upon every person in the human family that was connected. They understood, I'm going to die. A revelation started happening. I am immortal. Oh, you've lived 900 years, but there's coming a day that I won't live. I'm preaching old time right now. We're living in a society that says we're going to reach the moon, we're going to land on Mars, and we're going to live forever. But I've risen to tell you on this last Sunday of 2020, we better recognize that our lives are mortal. We need God. We need the eternal one to step into our mortality. Somebody in this house, go ahead. Walk through the painful path, but get there with me today. You need to learn to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you starting to get there with me now? Do you recognize? I'm not going to live forever like I'm living now, but I need a God who will come down 
and teach me how to live forever. I've got a burden in my spirit today. I hear young people, and even among us, saying words and making plans as if life is forever. I'm not trying to rain on your plans or, or discourage you about pursuits. And, and, but listen, you've got to have God every breath you take. You've got to have God every moment that you're awake, every moment you're asleep. You've got to have God. Oh, hallelujah. I know my homiletics is off a little bit today, but I'm here to tell you there's a God who is eternal, and I'm not eternal. And I need him more than I need the breath in my body and the food I'll eat today. Is there anybody in the house that can rise up in faith right now and say, I am going to call upon the name of the Lord. I need God. I need God. We've got politicians and people in leadership portraying a message to the communities that you don't need God. Humanism is alive and well. I had a few days this week. You afforded me a few days off because of the holiday, and I was able to invest in some research, and I heard the message again. I heard the message again. Democracy is God. And all let me tell you, you need God. I need God. And when Enos was born and the word mortal was released in the human family and then Adam died of natural causes, we assume. Something began to happen in the human family. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. 930 years, the death of Adam triggered the reality of our mortality. And men begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Now, I have, I'm going to go on attack right now, just warning you in advance. I'm not attacking people. And I run the high risk of being misunderstood. But I'm just going to come, I'm going to come out like I received it. I'm on a mission against fear today. Okay? And I know that when we all experience fears, the Apostle Paul had fears. Every, and if he has fears, we all have fears. So that's, the, that's as much disqualifier as we get today. Because we have to know the raw reality that fear is going to happen. But this is what was in the... Hebrew, the writer of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. It was this that was in his mind about that pre-deluge world, the world before the flood. He said, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus, he also himself came down and took part of the same that through Mortality. He might destroy him that had the power of mortality. That is the devil. Now verse 15. Here's the verse. And deliver them who through fear. Holy Ghost, come help me. I'm telling you, I'm going on the attack. Through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You can call it coronavirus. You can call it influenza. Label it cancer. But no matter what you walk around with in this life, death is working in our members. But when you repent of your sins... And you get baptized in the name of Jesus. And God fills you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
death has no more dominion over you. I'm not going to preach or pastor a church that's cowering in fear behind every news report, but rather I say call upon the name of the Lord. Somebody in this room, somebody in the online audience needs to conquer the enemy and say no more. I learned to call upon. I've learned to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm on the attack. Let me tell you why. I have to set it up. The fear of death is very strong. And until Adam died, something was suppressed. Because the human family, it seems, at least the Hebrews believe this, that the only example of death was murder to them. But when Adam died, something happened that staggered them. And they started calling on the name of the Lord. Save us, O God. The only answer to the fear of death is a revelation of the saving name of Jesus Christ. My God, he's working right now. I just want to hush for a minute in his presence. (laughs) Let me tell you about the power of the name of Jesus. We took a little trip out west a few uh, years ago, we were so blessed. You allowed us uh, 15 days off. I'd never taken that kind of vacation, ever. And we were driving through Utah, and something, some things happened. And, I mean, it was so fast, I didn't have time to pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But it just happened so fast, all I could get out was, Jesus! And I had some blowouts on the trailer, and before I knew it, it just right there, just straight. You see, even the simplest of, of circumstances, God has power in the name of Jesus. Did you hear the singers? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Is there anybody in the tabernacle today that's facing fears of the unknown, fears of health, fears of wealth? I want you to get what they got. Call upon the name of Jesus. Somebody praise the name right now. Everybody praise the name of Jesus right now. Come on, ask the Lord for a revelation of the saving name of Jesus. Now, what I'm about to say is so anti-humanism. It, you know, it, run, it runs the risk. I'm going to be misunderstood. I know I'm going to get some calls. But I'm just telling you, I'm not backing down from this. I am not a hireling. And neither am I a dictator. But I'm not a hireling. I see a wolf coming. Here's what Jesus said about that in John 10, 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scatters them. The hireling fleeth because he's a hireling. Next verse. And careth not for the sheep. I care too much. So I'm going to warn you. There's a wolf coming. And his tactic is fear. In fact, he's invested just about all of his arsenal in the one weapon called fear. I refuse 
to let this congregation get, con get con uh, covered with a spirit of fear. Every man of the house, I would almost want you to stand. I won't do that, but I'm asking you, I'm begging you that you get a spirit of faith on you that every fear that would come in your home, every fear that would come to you in your house, you would have instantaneous power to resist it as shepherd of your home. Come on, somebody. Don't let that fear get in your house because it'll end up coming here. But if we can keep it out of our house, then by the time we come together to his house, there will be a posture and a place of faith that people can come and find hope. <laughs> Can anybody hear me out there? I said the world is about to become hopeless. I'm not giving up on America. I'm not. But I'm telling you, there's a wolf coming. But there's also a lamb coming. And I know the name of the lamb. <laughs> Yes, uh, and I'm here right now to encourage somebody to learn to say, Jesus, Jesus, wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above, superior to every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess from the front to the back from side to side somebody practice the sermon today Jesus Jesus speak the name of Jesus declare the name of Jesus I see a wolf coming and his message hasn't changed Oh, I'm, I'm upset right now. I've got to get control of my spirit. You better unplug that mess. I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a constant message of fear. It's, and it becomes an anticipation of the next fear. There's a verse coming to my heart right now. I want to say it's Romans 1. But... Uh, it says, for the gospel, I'm not ashamed. That's Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Get 17. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Verse number 16, 17. For there it is. There it is. For therein is the righteousness of God Help me, church. Revealed from fear to fear. No. no, that's not how it works in this kingdom. In that kingdom, it's an anticipation of the next fear. Oh, my God in heaven. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is working right now. The Spirit of God is helping somebody to hear and see. We don't go from fear to fear. We go from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith by faith the just shall live by faith we're not going to die in fear we're not oh somebody have faith A few days ago, Sister Burns and I were so blessed to share a Bible study with someone. And as we were sitting there, 
we got kind of got finished with sharing the scriptures and guess where I ended up? You must be born again of water and spirit. And this person, they said to me, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Sometimes it's not fear. Sometimes it's the doubt of self-release. Can I really yield to God and trust Him? But what I detected in that person was phobos, fear, phobia, fear of God's presence. Well, that's, all, that's easily remedied because the only thing that can take you out of that is repentance. <laughs> when I am out of fellowship with God, I cower in fear. But the moment I kneel in repentance and I start emptying out all of the problem and separating me and God. See, I sound like an old time preacher, don't I? <laughs> I felt it coming this way. <laughs> you can't live in this, in this society without repentance. You can't even go to the mall all the men need to testify right now. You can't even go to the mall without having to repent. <laughs> and so we repent. And the moment that repentance begins to happen, faith by repentance, repentance by faith, then something starts to lift. You remember that old song? I remember when my burdens rolled away. I remember when my burdens rolled away. Oh, I remember when his spirit came to stay like a newborn babe. That I remember when my burdens rolled away. I see a wolf coming. Listen to pastor today. I see a wolf coming. You think we've heard a message of fear to now? It is a drop in the bucket to what's coming. In fact, Jesus said it this way. When men, Luke 24, when men, 21, when men would see the things coming upon the earth, their hearts would fail them because of fear. Fear to such a degree that it stopped the heart from beating. Preacher, you're scaring me. I'm not scaring you. No, the, the adversary is the one that has that power. I'm warning you is what I'm at doing today. I'm warning you like an old time preacher would warn you. Find your prayer closet. Get back in the word. Because when things get to rocking and rolling, and they're going to, you better have an anchor. When the flood starts to rise, the flood of fear and unbelief and sin and unrighteousness begins to rise. You better have your feet on a firm foundation. Hallelujah. Because, hallelujah, because the wolf is coming, but the lamb's coming. I said the lamb is coming. He said it this way. I've come that you might have. And life <laughs> more. <laughs> While that system is dying, this one is living. It's living. It's alive. Clap your hands if you believe. Clap your hands if you believe. <laughs> so we go from faith to faith. The faith, please listen, faith in eternal life. Do you really believe that when you die, it's over? If you do, you have, of all men, most miserable. But if you believe that you have eternal life, 
through the new birth, then all the hopelessness of this society cannot taint the hope you have in Jesus. Matthew 121 is the continuation of Eben, the stone that the builders rejected. The angel said, You, she shall bring forth a, help me, church, she shall bring forth a, one more time, she shall bring forth a son. Jesus was born a son. And thou shalt call his name. And the translators did all they could do to emphasize the angel's word. They put it in bold and they put it in all caps. J E S U S. For he shall save his people from their sins. Enos was a son named for mortality. Jesus was a son named for immortality. You can't hear me, can you? Can you hear me back there? Enos was named as a son of mortality. But Jesus was named a son of immortality. For in him dwelleth life. I don't mean just the breath of natural life, but spiritual life. All right. I'm on the attack. I'm still on the attack. Hasn't lifted. And I'm getting ready to be bold. And I would enjoin you. I would invite you to be bold with me for your house. I'm going to be bold for this house. But you need to be bold for your house. I declare that when you speak the name of Jesus, faith is released and fear has to go. There is only one absolute remedy for fear. And it's found in 1 John. Perfect love casteth out fear. That is the power of agape, love, to get violent toward fear. Let me explain to you this way, maybe. The word casteth out is a very violent word. You remember reading when Satan was cast out of heaven? That's that's the same word, violent, very violent. Uh, Jesus went about casting out devils. You remember that? Talk to me, church, I can't hear you. Do you remember that? Casting out devil. This is not a passive, this is a violent action. <clears throat> Love has the power to walk into a surrendered heart, take a hold of fear, and cast it out. I really don't want to ever get to the point where love has to do that. I believe there's power in our faith. I believe long before love has to get involved, we can say by the authority of the Word of God. Come on, are you building the case with me? Come on, talk to me. By the authority of a flawless Word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus, you are bound, spirit of fear. Something's breaking in the Holy Ghost in here right now. I believe God is honoring that declaration of faith. Come on, let it fill your mouth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have, I don't know, 12 or 13 verses that I won't be able to go through. All of those verses, I'm sorry you loaded them and I won't be able to use them. But I will use one, Psalm 116, verse 17. We're going to read it together. Are you ready? One, two, three. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. 
and will call upon the name of the Lord. God, my God, my God. AP News, AP News, News Bulletin, bomb set off in Nashville. I wonder what that's about. Maybe it's another terrorist attack. Maybe, and you go down that trail of fear until you end up quaking in fear. Or you hear the AP News, news, AP News, bomb set off in Nashville. Oh God, touch our world. I know it's in a mess. Help those that have been affected by it, Lord. But I give you thanks because you're on the throne. God, you're great. You're so good. You're mighty. And in the name of Jesus, let every hidden thing be revealed. Church, there is a difference in the path we take. I haven't said it this strong, but I'm going to say it. Please. Don't bring that fear into the body of Christ. Preserve your faith. Have confidence in God. And call upon the name of the Lord. Well, I think what I'll do is finish college and get married and I'm getting a job and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm I will I will I will I will I will you will if the Lord will we ought to say if the Lord will we'll do such and such and go so and so and do that my God I feel his holy power here right now <laughs> because we're mortal you're not promised the next breath and preachers preaching to you today today's the day to call upon the name of the Lord oh I had so many verses they went down and watered in the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus was called upon them let's stand together I don't know what the ministry of music has selected to help us come into the presence of God as we conclude we won't have an altar service up here around the front today unless you feel encouraged and impressed to come but right in the seat where you are, right standing right there where you are, if you can make that place a holy place and a place of consecration. I'm asking young and old, everybody, everybody young and old to take a moment right now and listen to the old-fashioned preacher's message today. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's not talking about the plan of salvation. He's talking about being saved from fear. Woo. If you're wrestling with fear and Phobos today, right where you are, I invite you to close your eyes and block out everybody around you and just take a moment and lift up the name of Jesus right now. your hand on that person beside you. <laughs> and draw from their fire. Somebody draw from their fire today. Join together in the name of Jesus.
sing it with us right now. Sing it. Breathe on me, Holy Ghost. and being assembled for fear. I think it says that the disciples were in the room and the door was shut for fear. <laughs> Maybe they confined it and they, were, and they were there in fear. And Jesus, the Bible says, through the door <laughs> Jesus passed through the door <laughs> and, and he said here's what he said peace 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 they found it and the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Am I in the book? Talk to me, church. I need to hear from you. Talk to me. Or... Even the disciples were afraid. And, uh, but Jesus, the Bible says, <laughs> came and stood in the midst. <laughs> and here's what he said. Oh, let these words sink into you. In this world, you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. <laughs> Peace be to you, oh God. <laughs> just a few verses later, he breathed on them. I think it is that same text, just a few verses later. Two verses later, 22, he says, And he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. You didn't get that spirit of fear from me. I'm giving you a Holy Spirit. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. Are you ready to go out and take on the world? Anybody ready to go out and say, fear, do whatever you're going to do, but as for me and my house, we're going to be people of faith. Because we're going to call upon the name. Hallelujah. Let's do it together. One, two, three. Jesus. 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 Oh, I want to do that old time song, honey. <laughs> I want to do that old time song, take the name of Jesus with you but I'm I can't do it but I wanted you to take it with you this week you know that song too old and child of sorrow child of oh take the name of Jesus with you wherever you go oh hallelujah my God, His work is here right now. I know i got to release you, but His work is here. Don't leave with fear in your heart. Come up here and we'll pray for you if you're leaving with fear. God's going to help you. God will help you. God will help you. Shout His name one more time. Call on that name this week. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Please greet somebody nearby. Let them know you love them and appreciate them. Don't forget First Tuesday prayer. A week from this Tuesday, first Tuesday prayer. I'd like to see 80 or 100 here praying at Tuesday night. Call upon the name. I love you, Cornerstone. You're awesome.
If you see a guest, somebody you haven't met, take a moment and connect with them. We're so grateful that you're here today in the house of the Lord with us.